Don Mazzella here again for Small Business Digest. We have not one, but two guests today. We're going to talk about something that, uh, ironically, you know, so, someone talked about uh, uh, about a week and a half ago, not on the show, but when, uh, at, a, at a conference, when they said the problem with uh, a lot of uh, people is uh, they fall out of love with their company, particularly small business. Why? Because it's 24-7. Uh, unfortunately, that that's the way it is. But uh, uh, we're going to start with Melissa Pepin. She's going to, uh, and then we'll, we'll have Corey on, we'll, uh, and they're going to talk about it. Uh, Melissa, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Donald. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Melissa Pepin. I am just half of the business reboot, um, which is Corey and I's company, and we are we're business coaches. Um, so my personal background is that I was a I was a uh, communications major at the University of Georgia one hundred years ago, and um, I started a photography company when I was in school. Um, I shot portraits and moved into weddings, and I was a super successful wedding photographer for about sixteen years. But I always had this nudge to explore uh, deeper into business, and I loved the business of things. And so there were a few other ventures that I. Um, started that uh, you know, I've looked back at like my own entrepreneurial experience and it started when I was eight you know we were I, I was the kid that was hawking like seashell necklaces out on the curb in my neighborhood um, and I just loved entrepreneurship and so I I ran with that wildly for years and um, right during the beginning of the pandemic when everything had to shift and photography became a really hard career to navigate um, I made the shift to start coaching uh, female founders in business. And then Corey and I opened up the business reboot uh, about a year later. And so now we're on year three and we coach um, business owners and help them grow scale and pivot uh, as they are, you know, growing their business, which, you know, means that they have to find ways to fall in love with the back end of their business so that it'll last. I think elongating client journeys and, um, and just helping people understand that your business grows with you uh, is, is something that's super important to us. Okay, Corey. Well, and the funny thing about what Melissa just said is your business growing with you. Um, that's actually been a big part of my story in business. I actually have a master's in education. So curriculum and instruction is is my background. And I've taught um, elementary school all over the world, um, developed curriculum, um, have been uh, some doing some teacher training uh, myself. But I was also married to a Marine. Uh, we served as a military family uh, for 30 years. And so talking about seasons and the seasonality of what my career had to look like as we moved from Japan to Hawaii to Yuma, Arizona, to Beaufort, South Carolina, to Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, um, I had to grow, scale, and pivot every single time we moved. And so my career path, my journey um, led me actually into entrepreneurial work because I had a hard time um, taking that teaching career. It sounds like that would not be true, but let me just tell you, it, it, I found that to be true um, in some instances. And so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to open my own business and be in charge of my own schedule Um and it turned out to be a really great path for me. Uh, I had a love and a passion and a skill set for photography. I had a love and a skill set and a passion for working with families of young children and then pivoted into working with business owners and female founders. Like Melissa said, that's kind of where we made that connection of how can we support photography, business coaching, um, brand strategy, uh, looking at the back ends of people's businesses and really helping them tell their story and then in turn grow, scale and pivot their business is where our unique magic met up. Um, and so especially female founders and, uh, we do coach a couple of dudes, uh, and it, they, they are along for the ride. And, um, Eduardo is one of our, our fabulous uh, clients that we coach with. And he's like, I am here for all of it. You balance me out. Um, but we have, we have so enjoyed building business through businesses throughout the different seasons of, of life that we've lived. Uh, I'm going to interrupt you and ask a question. How did the two, the, the two of you get together? 
Well, that's a story. <laughs> that was that's a story. No. Um, so we had a combined business venture that we um worked in, in on the same on the same team for. But uh truthfully, it started even years before that when I was involved in a ministry for female entrepreneurs in creative industries. So photographers, designers, writers, bloggers, all those kind of things. And Corey was a um a guest at one of our big retreats that we had. And so she saw me speaking on stage. We kind of connected there as far as being able to know who each other were, but it wasn't until January of 2021 that we touched base and uh, kind of decided to, to like explore a friendship because we were running in so many circles together. And in June of that year, well, maybe it was like May of that year, she actually um, messaged me and said, Hey, I think I want to have a coaching call with you because my primary coaching business is helping women run successful businesses from a place of confidence. And so she said, we've got a lot of transitions that our family's getting ready to experience. My husband's retiring from the military. And I just want to see if like, there's a different direction I should be going. And I just feel like I could use somebody to talk this through with. So could I book a coaching session? And she got on the call and I was like, girl, you don't need me. Let's talk about what's what what you're doing what we're doing and we started brainstorming just kind of as a joke like we're we were we were a little bit tired of seeing the same faces in education the way that we had been seeing them and so we were like i just feel like we've got a wealth of knowledge and we watched during the pandemic so yeah. many people who ran these wildly successful businesses in our creative industries um close their doors because business got hard i mean it was it was booming for some industries and then it was really difficult for others. And so we watched them walking away and we said, man, if they, if they could have just revamped some things in the back end, um, you know, we don't believe you have to tear everything down. You can just like, you know, like 1980s Nintendos, you just pull the cartridge out, blow in it, stick it back in, push the thing down, push the button on um, and <laughs> reboot it. <laughs> reboot it. And so um, we, we said, you know, we think that we could help people do this. And so we just, with this LLC, Ivy Wed, and we decided to link arms and and do this. And it actually, our company started as a retreat for um, female entrepreneurs in creative industries. And then it quickly morphed into um, being a coaching hub for entrepreneurs in general. Well, last year was the first year there were more female uh, uh, entrepreneurs starting a business than males. So, uh, I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> But but the, let's talk. What what you you talk to people when when they're midway into their their opening phase, not before. Am I right? It ends up we being have, a little bit of both. Yeah, we it's a little um, bit of both. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Corey has a, a separate company as well because she I let go of the photography portion of my business when I stepped into to coaching for female founders, and that it, it's it's fun how it's kind of worked because I work individually with women who are just starting or are looking to, um, you know, people who've been in business several years, but have felt like there's a stuck and they can't figure out what it is. And they realize that it's a lot of their mindset. And then um, together collectively, we work with more elevated um, and um, seasoned entrepreneurs with a reboot. And then Corey, she works with businesses who are established or just starting doing brand photography. So um, we end up having our hands in a lot of pots. So yeah. we don't, we're not, we're not discriminating against any area of business, but we will say if you're looking to, to scale and pivot, um, that tends to be a more seasoned entrepreneur. Okay. Well, well, we're here to talk about staying in love with your business. What do you mean by that? I think that the longer you're in business, um, Sometimes the harder it can get, you think the easier it, it will get. That that seems to be the take on it, um, but not always. I think that uh, for those of us who are over 40, a little seasoned in life, we've, we've lived a couple of seasons and uh, we know looking back that that you have to be prepared for the changes that are coming. And I think that in business, it, it often mimics um, life in terms of uh, the industry shifts. Um, the the economic times, the market shifts, like you just said, uh, there are more women becoming business owners, I think because, and Melissa and I, I hit on this all the time uh, with a lot of our clients and with our own podcast, talking about how uh, the pandemic taught us a lot of things. And one of the things it taught us is that you've got to be able to, to look ahead and be prepared to make a pivot. And so talking about the seasonality of business, maybe you, for instance, with women, 
maybe you started your business um, before you had children. And so that was, that's a season where you can run pretty hard, but then whenever you start a family, uh, then that becomes a whole different take because now you may have sleepless nights, teething babies, trying to figure out and manage and juggle childcare. So your job, your business may look different. You may need to outsource more. You may need to bring in, you know, somebody to help you manage some things that you're no longer able to manage and juggle like all the spinning plates. Um, maybe for like Melissa and I, we have older children now. My kids are in college or out of college. Um, so I have more time now to focus on my business than I did in the years where we were trying to make it to, you know, tennis practice and football games and, and all the things. So I think that looking at your your business through all the seasons um, and remembering that you have to be adaptable take good care of yourself so that you don't burn out. We also know people that start businesses and they run super, super hard and they burn out. And then they're like, I'm done with this thing. I'm closing down. We, we know the stats of so many business owners that are closing down within the first few years. They never make it past that five-year mark. And so our whole purpose is helping people look ahead, look at their life currently, where they are, what season are you in? What, um, what, ability do you have? What um what what's the the span of your time that you actually have to to give this business um when you are doing all of the other things in life and and craft it there and look at the seasons that that may be coming and grow let your business grow as as your your life is growing. Well, yeah I think business can get really disenchanting if you are unengaged with with how your actual life is going to run and you just look at things uh, purely from a business perspective. And so for us, we just want to serve as a reminder too for the entrepreneurs that we're working with that um, because we, we were those people who um, did extra. We actually had a conversation about this a couple of weeks ago about when we were running our photography business, because we both started at the age of digital, like the birth of digital photography and the birth of social media. We were the first bloggers that ever existed because it didn't start until 2006. And so all of these things that people are utilizing now as, um, you know, marketing tools, you know, your blogging, your social media, none of this existed before we started, you know, and, and I remember the first Blackberry that came out and my husband and I, we went camping. I was four months pregnant, by the way, do not recommend hard pass on that ever again. Um, I remember going back into the tent to get something and I could see the little blinking red light. And I was like, so anxious because I knew that probably meant, or I knew that that meant I had an email. And so that was like, you know, that was how we did business. Um, and, and so we just know that, uh, the, the joy can be sucked from the way that you serve and from the thing that you love to do, which is the whole point in you starting the business in the first place, um, really fast. If you're not balancing life and the season that you're in in life and, and checking your capacity and setting up things in your business that are going to help, um, help you be able to do both because uh, it'll, it'll take over and then you get burnt out. You don't want to do it anymore. Well, uh, let me ask this, this question, which also come, come up uh, two weeks ago. When I was talking, uh, I'm a lot older than you, you ladies, uh, even though you, you say you, uh, you're, 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 um, you're over 40, but um, uh, in the forties and fifties and sixties, the, uh, Parents thought nothing of leaving their children, not taking them to uh, tennis camp or or uh, football games, etc. While they did the business, and, uh, and today um, a mother has to uh, make sure that she's she, she's involved in the children as well as the business. How do you get them uh, to uh, be able to be selfish at times and do the business rather than the child. We have a great quote for this, and I will let Melissa have the honors of this because I'll tell you, this is something that we work on with our coaching clients all the time. So Melissa, you too, you do the quote and then I'll, I'll pop yeah, in yeah. my thoughts. Um, we have <laughs> the first time that I, I remember saying this in a room full of people, I was like, oh gosh, this is going to either go poorly or it'll go great. We'll just cross our fingers and see. But we said that you can't let the, the reason that you do your business also be the excuse for why you can't. And so a lot of people, and I'll just say women in general, we will say, we want, you know, to grow this business so that we can have time with our family. We can have, I, I will say in the age of like 
MLMs and internet um, stars and people being famous just because they're famous on social media. Um, the the thing that we have heard, uh, spent years hearing was people saying, I want to retire my husband as like one of their big things. And we kind of, uh, we laugh about it because I'm like, my husband, if he were, if I retired him, he'd be getting another job. It's just that he would be bored. He couldn't just stay here. But um, we know and because we've been those people before. We have been in situations where um, you will obligate yourself so much uh, and, and it's not necessary every time. It's not necessary. We also both have husbands that don't believe you babysit your own children. That's called parenting. And so they're okay. very quick to step in and be like, yeah, I'm the dad. So I'm supposed to be here to handle like things when you're not. Um, and so that that is something that we see, but you can't let the the reason, like the heartbeat of taking care of your family and wanting to help provide and, and all of this also be the excuse. I can't because the kids have this, they have this. And we, I mean, we have hard and fast rules set um, within our own parameters of business. For me, I grew up with a single mom who had me at 16 and she couldn't come to all the sporting events. She couldn't pick me up after school. She couldn't always be there for drop off. Um, and that was something I know that she wished she could have done, but she was too busy working three jobs to make sure she and I had a roof over our head. And so for me as an entrepreneur, I said, come hell or high water, I cut off every day at pickup time for my kids. I'm going to go pick them up. Even if I come back, there've been times we're on zoom and I literally am like, Corey, watch the dog. I'll be right back. And I'll run up the street and pick up both my kids from the middle and the high school. And I'll come back and she's still here. And I forget. And she's like, you, I'm over here. I'm still on zoom. And so we'll come back to work. But for me, it was it, like, that's something that we had to do. And of course was the same way. Um, Corey, go ahead. Well, And I will say too, having, I have a, we have a daughter who's 25 and then we have twins that are 21 and watching our oldest daughter graduate from grad school and start her first big girl job and watch her take on higher ed like nobody's business at 25 and make a shiz ton of money um being so proud of her and then our our twins who are you know in college infinite ones in nursing school and once in a graphic design program and and listening to them Melissa and I actually one of the teariest moments I have ever had as a mom and an entrepreneur is Melissa and I actually interviewed my girls and we were talking about like what what did did what did mom being a business owner how did it impact you? What are the things you saw? Uh, how, how did it make you feel? And they were like, being we are inspired as young women to chase our dreams because we know that anything is possible because our mom did it. Our mom may, had a passion. She We watched her serve really well. We watched her show up for people in big ways. Yeah, she still showed up for us. She still was there for as much of the stuff as you know I could be there for. But And they always knew that they were number one. But also they were not the only one. I was also meant to serve in these other really big ways. And that inspiration to show young women go out there and do big things. Um, that right there is is my biggest take on being a mom and now having your adult children be able to to speak it back to you and reflect back, be a mirror for what they learned from you. And it may not be the words that you said. It may just be in the way that you made people feel, the way that they watched you take really good care of people, the way they watched you manage all of the things um, really has been impactful. Well, and we're the moms that the, what, the girls know they can call. Like, what, you know, What's your website? Uh, we have a website at thebusinessreboot.com. Okay. So say it again slower. Yeah, thebusinessreboot.com. Okay. All right. I wanted to get that in. But now oh. I'll hit you with another question. Sure. Which is, um, uh, uh, sons and daughters of uh, people, uh, in, of small business owners, increasingly don't want to go into the business with the, the take it over I mean, that's the number one problem for uh, uh, a business owner is in their 50s and 60s. Who's going to re replace them? Uh, wh what do you say to that? Well, I think I can speak to that because I just hired my daughter, my college age daughter, my graphic design major, uh, as an associate photographer in my business. Uh, and I think I think it's it's mm, it's letting them be a part of it and asking for their that's what I found um 
I think that it's also encouraging them to go and be who they're um, interesting to them, and, but then also let them know that they have a place. They have a place here. If you if you want to come back and work in this family business, Melissa and I have actually talked about the dream would be to have an agency type model with our business and then have our kids all come back to work with us and for us and like help us grow this thing. Um, and so who knows if that will, will that come, come to being, um, but watching my daughter be able to come into my business and have really great ideas as a 21 year old, um, and, and to, to feel empowered enough to share them and to say, Hey, I want to, I want to be a part of this. Um, but, but it's also because I've taken her along, uh, the way I have watched for very specific skill sets that she has passions that she has and found ways to incorporate her into the work that I do, um, and to let her have a little piece of it and to encourage her. So I think that that is a key thing when you're looking at your kiddos. And like I said, one is a nursing major and that's where she wants to serve. I do think that we have planted entrepreneurial seeds though in all of our kiddos, Melissa and I. Um, so who knows, they may come back to it. But I, I think that it's encouraging your kids to go out and, and be themselves, um, but also to look for those specific skill sets that they could add to the family business and then also make a place for them. I also think that it's um, not talked about very often, but um, at times entrepreneurship can be a trauma response <laughs> where you can't depend on anybody else. So you can depend on yourself. So you might as well start a business to make sure you can pay your bills. And, um, and I think uh, at least I can speak for us. Our goal as parents is we want our kids to grow up and do the things that they want to do. We want to, as long, as long as they are doing what God has placed in their heart to do and they are, um, you know, and they can pay their bills. I mean, they can pay their bills. Oh their bills like, go do it. But, but we also, you know, I think for, for people who like, I worked for a family business growing up and, um, and I watched that business after the matriarch passed away within, I don't know, six months or so, um, the business, they tried to sell it. And I think, I think that there were some, um, things both realistic and unrealistic that went down with, with just trying to distribute the business um, to someone else that, for purchase that made it so that they, they did not fully understand everything as the kids who were in their fifties and sixties uh, that the matriarch did, who was in her nineties. And, um, and so that business closed and it was real sad because our, it had been in our community for 80 years. And, um, and I think that I watched, them not be disappointed that their kids chose not to, but, but also like be relieved that their kids didn't. And so that's, that's where I will say that the, um, the disappointment can, can go both ways. You know, uh, my mom is actually, she was a professional boxer and now she owns a boxing gym in Atlanta. And, um, she would always tell me, she's like, you're, you're not going to be a pro boxer. Like it's too much. I don't want you to do it. I don't want you to do it. Um, and, uh, because she didn't want me to have to experience the heartache of the things that she went through to get where she was. Um, and, and so I think that, um, it's just like a weird, funky balance, but also if your kids aren't wanting to pursue what you did, um, for your career and they're not wanting to carry on the family business, um, the easiest way to prevent resentment and to ensure the success of your business is to not force them to do it because mm -hmm. this newer generation of kids that are coming up, um, they're a different ball game. They're a different ball game. And, um, they have different, uh, work ethic. They have different ideals. They have different things that are important to them that, that they value. And, um, I think for the first time in a really long time, they value their time more than we ever did. Because again, I can at least speak for Corey and I, we were extra, we were, we're going to do this. We're going to, it's going to be 3am and I'm still up working and I'm doing, and it was like, we wore busy as a badge of honor for a really long time. And, um, I think anybody that's done that goes, I don't want my kid to do that. So it's just a weird balance. Um, there's not a right or wrong answer, but I do think that looking at your child as a, a person and, and, uh, instead of, you know, just a replication of you is really important. I will say one more thought on this is that I've actually watched a family business be, be transferred to the two boys in the family, um, who are now grown men in their late thirties and forties. And, um, they're my parents' best friends. They own a funeral home back home. And, um, what was, what is really cool is that the, what the dad did that was, that was right was that he allowed his boys to bring what they saw in the marketplace to the table and was open to to changes, open to what we're talking about right now, seasonality in business and in the marketplace. And in fact, they ended up opening up a crematorium 
actually, I think they now have two locations. Um, the boys have done a lot in transforming that business and looking at different ways to, um, to pivot and to also position themselves in the community in new and different ways. And so I think as the owner you have to be of the willing business, to let change happen because you if have you to be willing. Yeah. We'll that, get in the mindset. The parents will get in the mindset that it, this, this is, is the, the only way we've always, always done it this way and we can't ever change it. And it's like, well, it's going to fail. This is done different. Business is done different. And so I think the most successful cases that I know I have personally watched is that when the children were allowed, were invited in and allowed to have a voice and not just be like, this is the way we do it, jump on board or get out. I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. Were they a funeral home? You said a crem crematorium. Yeah. The, yeah. They own a funeral home, but then they also have two crematoriums and uh, it's, it's a very successful business back home. Mm. <laughs> uh, I can an interesting tale I could tell about that um, back home and and uh, where I grew up, the, the, there was a, a a funeral home run by a woman who had three sons, and uh, they finally had a break up. And I had three different funeral homes. Each of the sons had one of the funeral homes. That was the only, only way they could really divide the the the. the uh... <laughs> anyway, that's. But, uh, I get that. I get that. But let's talk. We really been talking about um, keep me in love. Uh, we have just a couple of minutes left. Well, someone comes to you and say, "I'm no longer. I, I view the, my business as a chore rather than a passion." What do you say to them, or what do you ask? Corey, you want to start? Yeah, I, I will say um, that. Some of the things that we coach on too is celebrating the milestones. Look back at all of the amazing things that you've been able to do in your business and with your business. Um, are you involved in the community? Um, is it a, a pillar in your community? Have you been able to use it as a vehicle of service? Um, no matter what the industry is, you can always, um, you know, we have a great real estate team here and she does amazing things with her team of realtors. They're an all female team and they really are involved in community service. And you can just see the passion for what they do and how they serve light up in them um, when they talk about their work in real estate, but also in their work in the community. And so I think that, um, I think sometimes we get out of alignment, if you will. What is your purpose with this business? If you don't love it anymore, let's dump the purse of your business, if you will. Melissa and I taught a whole workshop on this. Like dump the purse of it. What's working and what's not working? What are the things that you love about it still? And what are the things that you really hate and it is draining like the life out of you? Um, there are ways that you can outsource things. Like I don't enjoy this part of it anymore. Uh, the bookkeeping part. Okay, well then don't do that. Hire a bookkeeper or outsource that to somebody. Um, and really looking at are you still aligned with the purpose of this business and where you're going with it? Um, because that can always evolve and change into a new season. Um, so those are the places that we always start with clients. When somebody comes to us and says, this is stressing me out. I don't love this anymore. We've had a couple of those clients and we really kind of peel back the layers like an onion of what is it that you don't love about the business anymore? And how can we fix those, those pieces? I think too, we remind them that this is their business. So a lot of times, especially in the age of technology, the way that we have it now, um, social media, everybody running businesses on social media, um, there's just so much comparison. It's like they need to put some blinders on. They need to uh, cut out the noise. And so we ask them like, what do you want this to look like? Because you can, you can do it. It doesn't matter if nobody else is doing it the way that you are. That's probably going to actually be a differentiator and set you apart, which will be fantastic. And so um, we just encourage them to take a look at the whole and, uh, and yes, absolutely get back to the, to the parts of their, their self that will feel aligned with running this business, remembering why they started in the first place, you know, and it is a big buzzword where people say, we want to know your why, but I'm going to tell you as somebody who's done this for almost 20 years, like your why changes, it shifts, it grows, and it should, because you shouldn't be the same entrepreneur at year one and year five and year 10 and year 20, like your, your goals should shift, your priorities should shift. And, um, but, but the longer you do it, the more clear you get the reason that we love serving women that are in their second season of, of building 
building businesses, meaning like after 40, is because they know what they want. They know what they don't want. They know what they'll put up with and they know what they'll fight for. And I think that everybody has the opportunity to do that um, the longer they're in their business. And then and then just asking yourself, like, is it going to hurt me more to to not do this than it will to do this? Um, we are not the coaches that will say, you should just keep on beating this dead horse. Just keep it alive because for the sake of keeping it alive. Like sometimes you just need to close it up. Sometimes it's not worth it anymore because it's not, it's not that it's not recoverable, but if you've changed and you don't want it anymore, you don't have to feel like it's binding you at the wrist. Like you, you can let go of this and move into the next thing now. And this is the beautiful part about business is it can adapt and grow as you do. We talk a lot about elongating client journeys in the way that um, we like joke, I, I joke that people would buy my pickles on the side of the road if I started selling them because I've got people who are involved in my business now and been involved in the reboot now who were people whose portraits I shot a decade ago, um, who then I shot their wedding and I shot their kids' pictures. And then uh, they were like, oh, you're coaching? Well, I'm going to start a business. And so they started with that. And then they were like, wait, you're coaching together with Corey for, El well, I've been in business now for a while, so let me work with y'all. And so it's like, you can bring people along the journey with you. It doesn't have to be so segmented that your people don't get to know you. Um, and so I think it's it's just a lot about um, being billing, being willing to ask yourself the hard questions, being unafraid to let it go if it really is time, and then being resilient to know that it's all fixable if it's what you really want. Well, on that note, Melissa Pepin, we have to say thank you for a very illuminating time, you and Corey. But well, one last time, your website? It's thebusinessreboot.com. <laughs> Okay, and on that note, we say thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Thank so you, much. you too.